Dawson. Welcome to the Dylan Friend Podcast, my friend. Long time in the making. Thank you very much, mate. It's, a, uh, it's been a, a long time coming, but uh, I finally made the list, so uh, thank you very much for having me. Mate, I've, you've been on the list for a long time. You've been a busy man, and congratulations, you just finished A exam. So you haven't, done, you haven't finished your course, but fresh off the study books of your, of your finance course. Talk us through that, mate. How'd you go? Did you ace them? Um, yes, I had a, uh, obviously lost my job. Uh, uh, earlier in the year so um, decided then and there that I'd get back into a um, full-time semester of uni so um, which I had going on in the background anyway so smashed out a full a full-time uh, semester of four, four units um, and two units to go um, and then I'll have my master's done. Well done. It's pretty, pretty special. But That's fantastic. Um, yeah it's, it's hard work especially um, with the pressures of footy and trying to you know Especially when you come into the system, you're trying to make a mark. And you, and yeah. To, di- to dictate a lot of time into that and not into footy, it's a big commitment because you, you think when you come in, you've got to give everything into yeah. footy. Um, but I was pretty good at school anyway, so I just wanted to kind of make sure I was ticking it over. And I, and one thing I was I, ne- I was never comfortable thinking I was going to be a 300 gamer. So yeah. like I, I I knew it was a part time life, you know. So. Um, I had to plan a little bit for the future. Yeah, bloody well, mate. It's funny you say that because I can totally relate to that in the aspect of never being comfortable. But the only thing was you were comfortable because you, you know, you played 166 games, mm-hmm. three clubs, and before you were saying as well, you, which we'll touch on all throughout the show, but not many people get delisted and then go on to play 100 games. Yeah. So you were one of 10. Yeah. It? Well, I think yeah, top 15. I think. That have uh, most games ever after being delisted, but um, yeah, don't fact check that. But uh, I'm pretty sure something like that. That's um, a cool fact. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a hard thing to do because um, it, the motivation levels when you do find out that you've been delisted, it's hard to kind of have that belief um, go again and go again. Mm. But um, yeah, as we'll get get into a bit later with Ross, like he was that one person that showed that bit of belief in me and kind of brought that out. Um, and gave me a bit more of a possibility mindset. We love Ross, and we will touch on that. But firstly, I want to touch on, because sometimes it's good to set the scene. Um, we've actually known each other for a long time. Mm. Now, do you remember our first meeting? Yeah, I do. Oh, you've reminded me of it, so I do. Oh, I have, have yeah, I? Yeah. Oh, fuck. It, yeah, it doesn't at the abduction here. We, we oh, okay. <laughs> that must have been after a couple. <laughs> yeah, it was. Okay, okay. Um, well, you remember it? Yep. Do you want to, what's your memories? Because I don't remember that conversation. No, well, you 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 brought it up that we um, um, obviously our sisters are, are friends. Yes, um, went to the same dancing school. Yes. Uh, in Essendon, um, and um, I'm pretty sure that one day you wanted to have a kick of the footy with me. So I think from my memory, you so you were TAC Cup at this stage, yep. and there was nothing cooler I think that when you're a young kid, like being able to kick a footy with an older guy, and I think that I'd been busting your mum. Uh, I won't say balls because it doesn't make sense. I, w- I was talking to your mum and I was just saying, please, please, can you get Zach down and have a kick? Can you please get Zach down and have a kick? And you came down. Credit to you, had a kick. I had a kick for about 15 minutes and I was like, okay, that's probably enough. You probably taught me. <laughs> I taught you a few things. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was awesome, mate. So then to see you go on and, and play some good footy and then obviously we got back in contact later on in life with mutual friends throughout the AFL. It's been, um, it's pretty, pretty crazy. But um, I've always wanted to do this podcast, mate, because you're such an interesting dude and um, like I said, we'll touch on it now, but there's so many um, good ups and downs and, and learnings for people throughout it. But let's uh, let's go from there, mate. Obviously, call to cannons as a young man. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty talented team you played with as well. Yep. Who were some of those guys? Um, yes, we. I got drafted as a bottom age, so I was 17, so back in the days where you could yeah, get drafted right. as, a, as a youngster. So, um, yeah, I played in a premiership team in 03 with uh, Brock McLean, Ivan Marek, Eddie Betts. Um, and a lot of other guys... Was Swanee in that as well? No, no. He, okay. was, he was a year... Uh, False. Two years above. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we won by, I think, 90 points in the grand final. Um, I think it was 90 to zero at one point. Fantastic. Um, and um, yeah, it, it was a very successful year in the in the Calder Cannons um, um, history because yeah, at that point we were pretty much the footy factory. Um, but yeah, being 17, I didn't really count on it i was finishing scores in year 12 and i i wasn't fussed whether i got drafted or not uh, because i knew i had another year left so um i kind of played my final year of footy at school at pegs um mighty pegs and um yeah just had, had a pretty good year and then 
played finals for Cannons that year and had a really good final series um, playing in the ruck. Um, 75 kilos. You played in the ruck? Yeah, I got drafted as a ruck. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, I got drafted as a ruck. Because there's vision of you playing for Fremantle in the ruck against yeah. like Collingwood one day and you yeah. get like all the clearances. Yeah, I, I got pinched hit a few times. Um, <laughs> That's so good. But yeah, like I got drafted back in the day when it was like the, the athletic... 198 yeah, centimetre yeah, yeah. Ruckman, you yeah, know, yeah. that was all all the vogue at, the, yeah. at that time. And um, obviously didn't grow um, no, to the neither. 202, 204, you know, kind of heights where you probably need to be these days. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, played forward most of my career, um, my, my junior career, mm. um, and then came in and played um, as a project player at Hawthorne. And so I didn't come in thinking I was going to play the next year or two. I, I kind of... Felt like I had two or three years in me to just to play develop, resis. get bigger, put on a bit of size. Um, <clears throat> I was pretty aggressive. I was pretty um, physical for someone that was so scrawny and skinny. Mm. Um, so I, I think they just thought if they could put a bit of size on me, I might be it might be something. Um, and so I spent a fair bit of time playing twos twos. The twos twos. Yeah, I won the best and fairest in the twos twos. The twos. <laughs> so wait a second. So this is a so scoop. the resis resis. This is a scoop because. We love the twos, twos on this show. There's nothing better than playing twos, twos. You're nothing saying better. that you're a pioneer of playing. I was kicking off to Jew at Box Hill. At se- what, 10 a.m.? It would have been 10 a.m., arrive at 8 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Up forward, kicking bags. Um, in the twos, twos. In the twos, twos. And I won the goal kicking BNF in the first in my first year. How many blokes at that time were playing twos, twos with you? Um a handful, maybe. Two. So there was actually it wasn't. Yeah, a, it yeah. wasn't, yeah, because I think at that time they had a cap on how many you could play in the actual senior team. Ah, okay. And so there was probably one or two a week. You know, playing in the twos, twos. Mostly in the, the ro- mostly the rookies. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> so good. And um, so I'd, I'd be out of there. I wouldn't even watch the seniors and just duck off home. Straight home. You know, straight yeah. home. Home by two. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> Mate, there's. Oh, geez, and we've talked about a lot in this podcast, but we've got some players here that love the love the twos, twos. Um, the good thing was you're done early yep. and you knock off. Yep. How did that work though? Because obviously you were playing twos twos in your mm. first year, but then when did you debut? Because you're in my third year. Third year. The end of my third year. Right. So um, I was playing forward my first two years and then um, in the third year um, they'd had a couple of injuries in the seniors. I think um, Crody and a few others had kind of gone down. Jonathan Hay was one who kept getting mm-hmm. um, yep. hamstring injuries and so they threw me back. Um, Mid season, um, <clears throat> just to have a crack at you know see if I could play mm. in the back line. And um, my first game, they've, I've gone out playing the North Melbourne twos in the in the in the twos, not the twos twos. Oh, in the playing on big senior twos on the senior twos, yeah. playing on big sav in my first game at full back. So I've gone about eighty kilos playing on big sav rocker. So wait, wait, sorry. You, it, when you're playing on sav rocker, is this prior it's not to Anthony rocker? Sav oh, rocker. sav rocker. Yeah. It's Rocker, fr- so, so the you, family took you've me done for a rockers. Ride. <laughs> 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 so you've, gee whiz, so that, that, thank, that, at Christmas dinners, like at the Rocker family, they should uh, be sending me a Christmas yeah, card every yeah, year. Every year, yeah. So you played twos, t- t- sorry, twos, twos, then twos with Rocker, yep. against Sav Rocker. So my first game, and then had I think I had eight, seven, or eight kicked on me in the first game, yeah. And I was like, oh, this fullback business isn't great, isn't great, yeah. Um, but they persisted. Um, um, and I, and I kind of had natural closing speed. I was aggressive, and um, and I think they saw something in there. Um, and then with a couple of injuries and stuff like that, um, and the club wasn't going that well at that point. That was before. Um, so I had Ken Judge um, initially, and then for those those first years, it was Clarko's um, intro like transition in. Yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't that successful. So yeah. um, they 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 gave me a bit of a crack um, at that point in round I think round twenty. May have been around twenty one um, against Richmond, and had a had a pretty decent game, um, and yeah, finished that year thinking yeah I was going okay, and then <coughs> um, the next year um, that was you know I was going to take kind of the next step hopefully yep. um, playing Locked back down again. the full back yeah um, still still sm- I was still skinny I was still 80, yeah. 83, 84 kilos so I still was probably ten kilos underweight really yeah well, really at least yeah. seven kilos was, of muscle it's ten kilos under what I was playing at yeah. by the end you know so yeah um, but yeah that, they were persistent with um, with the idea and they wanted to kind of see what I had and um, yeah I think. 
well, I think round two or round three, I played on Anthony Rocker. And Anthony that was Rocker. The, the infamous day. That was. So let's talk about the infamous day because, it, like, I actually don't. I was nearly too young for this. I don't actually don't remember this at all. Um, how was that going to that game? Because you got in your fourth game, yeah, fourth senior game, yep. and had eight goals kicked on you by Rocker at Eddie Had, and that was, I think, at the time post that game, a lot of people were saying to Clarko, like, why did you leave this young kid on yeah. Yeah. Um, Rocker? Yeah, he's why'd not you up do to this? standard. He wasn't, he shouldn't, he's not AFL standard. He shouldn't yeah. be playing. Why'd yeah. you keep him on the ground? Um, how was that? How, how was that whole experience? In like, um, One, what's the memories from the day? Like, was there anything in the, the day, day where, like, it actually happened and you were thinking they're going to take me off him and they oh, just didn't? It was the only thing I can remember um, that kind of gave me some kind of, you know, that I knew something was happening was when I w- taken off and it was like the cheers were like, Thank God he's t- going off the ground, mm. you know, and that's not a good feeling as a fullback when you're getting the cheers off no. the ground, especially in your fourth game. You think, well, <laughs> what am I? Oh, fuck <laughs> me. You know, I'm playing. I'm out of my weight division. Me half there was, there was no, there's no roll off defense. There's no system. There's it's just no, one on one. It's one on one. You're in the goal square. Oh, is that you're, you're playing on someone that's 20 kilos, Anthony? Take him to the goal square. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's this man. <laughs> so they're kicking it long, um, and so I think it was a pretty close game initially. Um, and then I think he ended up kicked six on me, yeah. two on um, a couple of other people, on Ruffy. I think yeah. Ruffy ended up, went back for that game and um, he kicked two on him in the last quarter. But by then the damage was done and they ended up, I think they won quite, quite convincingly on the day. But for the for the for probably the three weeks post that game, I was in the paper every day about, you know, that I shouldn't be playing. And, and Fourth and game though. I know. And... and like these days, like now I look back and I think the only th- the thought that I have about it always is like, why me? Like why? Yeah. Um, like no one knew um, what sort of player I was going to be. Like I was, I've only played four games. I know. Playing out of position, um, yet they, f- they felt the need to just like absolutely pile drive me for a couple of weeks post that game. Um, post, uh, and it gave Clarko absolute grief. And, and, and Clarko... Between him and I, and internally, there was no issue. It's no. like he he was kind of going, just go out and see how you go, yeah. have a crack. You know, it's all you can do. Just a learning curve. Um, but externally, it just took on. They were building whole, it more bigger. It took on yeah. this whole new life, you know, and and it, and it really um, yeah, it did take on a new life yeah. after that. How like just on that as well with Clark though, post game and stuff. Was there any sort of like, how was he? With that, like the coaching staff and stuff, were they more just treating it like, as you said, like, as a learning curve and just sort of thinking, like, don't stress, mate, move on, da 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 da. Yeah, or it was just like it was, it's development, you yeah. know. Like um, looking back, they probably could have done a little bit more to help me. Yeah, you know, I, I was out of, you know, I, I probably could have played on the second ball or wh- whatever it yeah. was, not the key forward, you know, and and rotated a <laughs> few more experienced people onto the, you know, the key forward, whatever. But if if his uh, mission was to Help me develop quickly and kind of throw me in and just you know sink or swim kind of attitude. Yeah. Um, that was that. But there was no like, oh, you're not. He wasn't saying you, it's not acceptable. You're not good. Yeah, enough. he wasn't yeah. doing it to like put you like no. put you down or anything. People think that like he, there's like a malicious bone. No, there, no, yeah. no, no. And so I think from that game, um, I copped it absolutely copped it for that week. And then we went down to Geelong um, the following week um, around Easter time, and because um, I remember Easter because. It was the resurrection because I'd come back from having <laughs> eight kicked on me <laughs> and I kept King, King Kingsley to one, zero or one goal. Oh, yeah. And that was the last time Hawthorne had beaten. Remember, because last week they were talking about the last time the Hawks and Cats had played. Oh, down at Skilled? In oh, Skilled. Team HBR, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that was the last time they played and that was the last time. So who'd you play on? Um, Kent Kingsley. I thought, you said, I thought you said Ken Hinkley. I was Kent, like, how old are you, man? Kent Kingsley. <laughs> Kent Kingsley. So, okay. um, and so... Went from having eight kicked on me, then having a really the decent resurrection. game, yeah. resurrection, yeah, Easter time, and then Jesus. and then it was like uh, the next week it was Nathan Thompson, um, David Neitz, Barry Hall, um, like, and that didn't stop. And I yeah. think Nathan Thompson kicked like four or five, yeah, you know, and it was just like I was playing on guys that were yeah big season full forwards, you know, and. It, it's hard, like, let alone like when at the end of my career when I was ready to go, like, yeah. Back then, when I was just this kid that wasn't probably applying myself Who, as much. Was there as I anyone could else that was like, did, was that was it forced there because like there was actually just no one else to play? Or? A few injuries, yeah. And, yeah. and 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 as I said, like Carco, 
had come in and it was, re- it was building towards, you know, 08, they won the flag. Yeah. So this was 05, you know, 06. Sorry. Just getting games into young So they're just trying stuff. to see if there's anything there, obviously. And, yeah. Um, and so, um, yeah, the next few weeks was like, it was pretty solid again. So it was like rocking up and playing on the guys out of your weight division. Mm. Um, no support, you know, on the field. I, f- I felt a, li- a bit isolated at, at times. Yeah. But, like, I was like, you know, I just have a crack. I'm just playing footy, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know? Um, and then I ended up played, I think, 12 games in a row. And then I got dropped um, after a Frio game. <coughs> I think it was round 14. Um, and then didn't play again. Crazy. Because for me as well, like, knowing you now and a lot of your mates as well, especially, like, you are someone that's, like, known now as a later on in football, a leader on field, um, definitely someone who helps out young guys, et cetera, et cetera. Do you think early days at Hawks, like when you were young, you just mentally weren't up, like you weren't ready for... Oh, definitely. Yeah. I, I, I look back and, and think, you know... Because um, all of the same. My application, you know, my consistency and all that, my preparation, um, I probably thought I was trying. Yeah. But I wasn't. You, know, you don't like, know how hard to work. No. And, and I think that was probably where, you know, I was, you know, some sessions I'd be flying on the track, some I'd just be like, oh, you know. Yeah, it'll happen. Miss a kick. And, you know, I wouldn't have the mental skills to kind of back it up yeah. every day. Um, and then, yeah, before I knew it, you know, like you got, you got games and then I didn't play again for two years. Yeah. And that was it. You just thought it was going to happen sort of thing. And then, and, and then post that, um, the back line – Reassured itself, like had Gillum, Crowed, and that team, the 08 flag team. Yeah. There was no injuries, there was no opportunity. So I'm yeah. playing twos, playing good footy, getting bigger, bigger getting stronger, getting yeah. more prepared. But to it's play, not happening. But it's not happening. Yet I'm still living with that, like every the crowd at every VFL game, the players going out to nightclubs, walking down the street, like supermarkets, everywhere I go, getting heckled because of that one moment. It's fuck. You know, and it's what just like... It, yeah, what, what, like, talking about that, like, now, just, like, the nightclub scene, because I think this is something that, like, a lot of players, a lot of, like, general public don't understand. How much of a toll can that take on players normally, let alone when something significant happens? Because, like, mm. I never had something really significant happen, but I know that, like, I'd cop shit when you're out. You always have people passing by saying shit to you, and you're just like, fuck me, like, what, like, what have I done to, you know? Yeah, yeah, and, and they don't know you. Um, and, and back then, I... I probably took it to heart a little bit. I was like, you know, why me? Poor me, you know. Mm. Now I look at it completely different. I feel sorry for people that do it now. I yeah. feel like, what's going on in your life yeah. that you have to resort to doing that to me? Well, it happened to me a week ago. A bloke came up to me in the street and pretended to take a hanger on me. Like, it doesn't stop for these people. Like, and it's just relentless. But I now look at them and I feel sad for them. Yeah. I don't feel like, oh, you're, you know, you're an idiot. I don't give them anything. I don't respond. Yeah. But it's like... Um, people feel the need to do that and think that it's, you know... Going to affect it, yeah. It doesn't affect me, but I feel like... The thing that did affect all the media stuff was my family. Yeah. You know, and, that, and then that affected me. Yeah. Because I get down when my family's down, not because it's affecting me personally. Like, I feel, you know, bad that people are calling me names and it doesn't affect me, but I could tell that my parents are well, they worried about yeah, me. They, they worried, were so yeah. worried about me, my sisters. And um, and that's the, the worrying part. And that's the... the that can tip you over that something might happen in a nightclub you might be with your sister you know and they you say something in front of them and and then and then you react and then i'm in trouble mm. and it's been happening for five six ten years and it, i have one moment weak moment and then no, i'm no. the one getting in trouble no, no. um but that's obviously what those people are looking for at that time um yeah, like there's I've, i had a time when um i was out in uh, fitzroy street and out with uh, a couple of schoolmates, um, <coughs> and I ended up was out the front, um, sitting on the curb where the taxis arrive, and someone, some random guy, walked up behind me, fly kicked me inside the, the head, knocked me out, knocked out my front teeth, knocked me unconscious. Is this when you're playing footy? Yeah, was that Hawthorne? Fractured my cheekbone, ran off, jumped into a car, and drove off. So like, what happened with that? Nothing. Well. Don't know who it was. Never found out who it was. Fucking hell! Um, did that like did the club find out? Yeah, I rocked up the training. And I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't see out my my right eye. Did that make it any? Like, uh, yeah, it did. It did because Ricky Dyson got hit the same night um, at the Beach Hotel. Um, but don't know whether it was the same person or not, but got King hit like uh, up the road. Um, 
And I was lucky that when I rocked up to training on Monday, I was like, oh, I'm going to cop it because I had no front teeth. Like, I hit the road that hard that I knocked my front teeth out. And I'm like, oh, the boys are going to give it to me. Um, and I rocked up to training and Danny Jacobs had been glassed on the Saturday night and he had this, like, massive scar down the side of his head. So it t- took a bit, <laughs> bit of the bit gloss of like, off. Yeah. But you, you've got <laughs> to, I just you kind of no blended teeth. in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so but do you reckon that that assault was footy related? Yeah, like 100%. 100%. 100%. Holy, f- that is actually fucking scary. Yeah, and so that's what I mean. Like, and, you know, I could chase it up and get police to, you know, whatever. But what's it going to do? What's it going to do, you know? But um, some people just you know, take things too far. They think that, you know, I don't know. Yeah, no, I might I never really understood it, to be honest, because, you know, I, I'm, I'm completely the other, the other way. Yeah. Um, like, I'm more of a lover and I'm more of a, you know, helping other people that, you know, um, need help so um, we never really understood that part no definitely and I think like, that one of the biggest reasons I wanted to get you on the show was because of that exact reason like I think from the outside perspective of of what that's shown there and to what the actual person you are you're actually one of the, the greatest dudes I've met in footy and I'm not just saying that because on the show but there's a lot of good people I met in footy but for you and I you know we'd probably hadn't chatted for 10 years but I remember I still remember to the day I came up to to see you in Freo and you treated me like you know, I'd seen you yesterday, and it's a testament to yourself, mate. And uh, it, it honestly is. And I think that this show is about you know chatting to people and actually getting to know them as the person and not mm. the player. Mm. And that's the biggest thing that always pissed me off in footy was people getting judged on performance and not on um, on on what they were, which is hard to know, but it is now. But anyway, we'll get to the point because this there is a quirky side to you. Yeah, and I want to say very quirky side. There's a few things we're not going to touch on, um, but one of them. Is this gives me anxiety thinking about this? But one day early at Hawthorne, you said you might not have been ready for for AFL footy at this stage. You might not have been switched on. (laughs) But there's a punishment session where you've so you've done something, and there's been a punishment session the next day. So I was late to what? I was late to a training session. Yeah. So what happened was we we trained at Glen Ferry Hawthorne. Yes. I lived in Keele. It's a big trip. Big trip. Traffic. Traffic. (laughs) I need sleep, you know. So I'm the time, the you know, I'm an hour and a half drive. I'll give myself an hour of forty, you know. Oh, that's see, never do that. You've got to give yourself a half an hour each way. I don't do it anymore. Okay. I, <laughs> so I end up chock a block traffic, um, all the way down the colder nightmare. Rock up to the um, the training field out in um, near Yarra Bend Golf yep. Course. We don't go for a run. And as I pulled in the car park, there goes the group off into they're the off. distance. Oh. I'm like, oh, no, what am I going to do? So I get out of the car and they're like, no, just get back in the car. <clears throat> so got back in the car, just sat there and waited for them. They're like, no, just go back to the club. Oh. So I drove back to the club. By the end of the day, they'd agreed to do a, a 5 a.m. Kerford Road, Port Melbourne session off the pier. Had a stressful night, couldn't really sleep, you know. And so I've gone home and... Um, the alarm and drifted off. Oh, I was restless. I'm like, oh god, I can't sleep in. So can't. just to confirm, this is your punishment session for being yeah, late. Yeah, You're going to Kerford Road. Whole team. Yeah, coaches. Because you were late, coaches. Yeah. <laughs> and rolling around, can't be late. Can't be late. Can't be late. Shut the eyes. Drift off for a bit. I feels like five seconds. I wake up, and I was meant to leave at four thirty. It was four forty five. Oh. And so. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon I've jumped in the car in my jocks. <laughs> I'm like, grab my stuff. I'm like, I've just got to get, I, like, and it's from Keelor to Port Melbourne. Yeah. It's, a, it's a half hour, uh, 20 oh. minutes, 25 minutes. Can I get there in 15? So anyway, it took me 25 and I got there at 10 past five. Oh, and, fuck me. Oh. And the whole group's standing there and I've just fanged around the corner. I'm like, oh, no, what am I going to do? And <laughs> you know the feeling. Oh, like, man, I can sickness, feel it now. This sickness feeling, <laughs> right? And so I've jumped out the car. It's freezing cold, freezing cold in the middle of winter. Yeah. I know, probably, probably just about to start winter. And um, get out there and the boys are just giving me the worst like, greasies. And I'm like, oh, no, what's going to happen? So they get me out the front, absolutely tear shreds off me. I think Clarko gave me an absolute rocket. Tears, 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 tears. tears. 
<laughs> the tears started, the tears I started coming. Oh, I didn't know what to oh, do. Oh, no. Uh, oh, so my body was just like, just so disorientated. Oh. And like, it was like I was in shock. And the tears, like, I didn't know what else to do. And the tears so were like, So this is oh, in front like, of the whole team. So, like, I was oh. so sorry. Right? Oh. Oh. And oh. it was like the worst feeling that you could ever have. Being late to a late. You're late to your own late punishment. It's not. It is the bottom of the barrel. So <laughs> that's where my, as part of my perception at the club, that, that really oh, yeah. put it back a yeah. long way. And, yeah. it, and <clears throat> even by the time I was delisted, like t- two or three years later, four years later. That was still a thing? Still a thing. It was yeah. always, you know. But by then I'd, I'd always get there early. Oh, yeah. And so I was always, once we went out to Waverley, I was driving for Kilo to Waverley. It was an even longer drive. Um, and then, yeah, I'd get there early. I'd get, if it's seven o'clock, so I'd get there at six and I'd sleep in the car. Mm. Um, so I, I'd kind of, oh, out shit. of all that, you, you learn your lesson. But Big lesson. It was, a, it was a very hard lesson to learn. Shit, man. <laughs> Do you know what the worst part is about being late? It's not nearly rocking up. It's actually like the 15 minutes where you know you're late and you're just going, what am I doing? Like, what, like it's, I'm meant to be there now, but I'm not. Like, what do I do right now? You've got to, you've got to chill. You've just got to sit in the car. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's nothing worse than being five minutes away stuck in traffic. Oh. Because it's like, you're five minutes away, but it's going to take you 15 minutes to get there. Fuck, mate. Can we talk? Like, we're not far from Kerb. The funny thing about this is we're actually not far from Kerb of Rope here right now, so I must still bring back memories. Uh, I can't. I drove the other way. <laughs> I, I, I understand that because we, I've told these, you know, a story a little bit, but at Carlton, we... When we lost, we'd go to Kerford Road Pier for about four weeks in a row. And the same thing every week. There would be someone late. We'd have to come back the next day, jump off that pier. I don't think people know how cold that water is in the middle of June, July. Shocking. August. Takes your breath away. Yeah, it's... If you can't swim, I was like, I'm a great swimmer. So I could literally... So I couldn't swim. I I can get in. No No worries. But people don't understand, because the water's that cold, your arms don't work. (laughs) So like you sort of go into like mode where you're like shaking. survival mode. And... All the blood goes to like inside of your body. So your arms are, you sort of, feels like you've got 10 pound weights on your arms. Because the worst one wasn't, we did, wasn't the Kerfer Rope here. It was a swim around a boy at St Kilda um, Sea Bars. So there was a boy. Yeah, it's about 100 metres out. It, I, I was going to say 300, but that was probably way too far. <laughs> it was, it's probably not 300. I'm going to say 150 to meet yeah, you right, somewhere around yeah, there. Right. 150 out, 150 back. Now, I, I'm not a confident swimmer in a pool. I actually couldn't swim 50 metres in a row for a while until I kept practising, but it's genuinely scary. Mm. Genuinely scary. Anyway, let's get over that because I don't want to um, keep going on that. But um, as you said, you finished up at the Hawks. Um, do you remember the conversation, the listed conversation? <coughs> Was it a meeting? Um, yeah, I remember I remember the room sitting at Waverley. They had a um, room looking over the, um, over the ground. I remember – I knew it was coming. That's mm. the thing. Like, I hadn't played for two years – I really probably hadn't um, worked hard enough to really shift things back into my favour, like mm. in terms of um, consistency and all that sort of stuff. Um, I probably thought that just getting it done on the full field in the twos was going to get me a game, but it was probably more than that. I probably needed to really be a bit more professional, be a bit more you yep. know, consistent off the field. Um, so I kind of I, – I, I'd read the play, so I knew it was coming, but it's still hard. It's still a hard conversation. Um, so hard, do you think that? But I was, I was, I was happy. Yeah, I was more. I, uh, I was still Anthony Rocker. This, and, and yeah, and my my confidence, my self esteem, it was gone. Yeah, it was shot, and I was like, I, I don't, don't want to do this anymore. I want to actually go back to uni. I'm smart. I can do something positive, mm. and I can actually be good at something. Yeah, and feel good about myself. I don't need this crap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was where my head was at. Yeah, so I was walking to the meeting like, yes, I, I can't believe it's happening. My whole dream that I want to play footy and it's all coming to an end, but I don't want to feel like that anymore. I can, yeah, definitely relate to that. You I know? can definitely relate to that. And then with that though, like you're saying, you finished, you didn't, you were sort of happy to finish and ready to go because you mm. didn't want to feel like that. What changed? Like, how nothing, did that change? Nothing changed. Well, I remember I got a phone call from from Ross. We love Ross. We love Rossi. Yeah, Ross the boss. Um, so how did you know Ross though? I didn't. Didn't know it. So one day this mystic phone call comes so through. So Ross, phone call. He goes, it's phone Ross call from um, Arab and I'm like, oh, is that debt collector? Or yeah. yeah. So end up, <laughs> pick the phone up and he's like having a, having a chat. How are you going? How's things? And 
I said, oh, not great, man. I'm, I'm kind of, <coughs> I'm done. This is post deadlift, obviously. Post, post yeah. deadlift, yeah. yeah. And so, um, conversation, cut it short. I just said, mate, I'm, I'm done with footy. I, yeah. I'm not interested in playing footy. I want to focus on being happy and positive, and I want to, want to shift in a new direction. I'm, I don't have it in me anymore. I've lost yeah. all my kind of confidence and my self belief in my own ability. And that's all that hard sort of to stuff. say to a coach that's offering having a chat with you from another team. And he's like, "Are you sure?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm done." So I hung the phone up. I'm not doing it. Sorry, Ross. And well, then Ross doesn't take no for an answer. It wasn't. Hard. Yeah, he didn't really want to say. He was like, "Are you sure?" And I was like, "I said I'm, I can't, I'm done." Yeah. Um, mentally done. Um, physically, I, I knew I still had it in me physically, but yeah. I just mentally, I didn't want to do it anymore. So, um, left at that. Um, and rolled back at uni, ready to go full time. I was like, going to smash this out. A week later, call me back. And he's like, um, I've been having to think about things. He goes, I, th- I reckon you made that decision a bit, you know, quickly over the phone. Um, have you had a chance to speak to your family about it? I said, no, I haven't. I said, I'm you know, not really, I said the other day, I'm not interested. And he's like, I, I want you to sit down and talk with your, your mum and dad. I want to talk with your family and just discuss it with them and see what they say. Um, and so I said, all right, I'll do that for you. And he goes, I'll call you back uh, next week. He goes, I only want you if you're 100% committed. If, you, if you're a bit iffy, I, I don't want you. Um, but if you're in, we're, we're interested. If we see something in you, uh, Stephen Silvani, um, we're, we're keen for you to come on board um, and add a little bit of depth to, to our, our list. <coughs> and so went back, spoke to mum and dad, and conversation was like, well, if you don't do this, Zach, like, you're going to be 40 years old and, and be that guy. What, going, what if? I wonder what would have happened if I had played that one year of footy. Yeah. I probably would have done something, you know. And and that was like my life. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be that person. I knew that for, for as much, you know. I didn't yeah. want to be that person. So um, having that conversation with mum and dad really kind of reassured me, like, let's just have a crack at it. Believe in yourself. Let's just drop everything, drop what's happened and kind of move, try and move forward and build something to change what's going on, you know, change that perception. And so um, call me back and I said, I'm, I'm fucking in. And um, so then and when I went in for a meeting and um, – which is probably where he, he, his and our relationship started was my first meeting with, with Ross after that conversation. Um, I pretty much laid all my chips on the table. I told him absolutely, like, everything. Why I was delisted, what I was doing, shit I used to get up to. Um, and I walked out of the meeting and I go – did I just yeah. know, did I just <laughs> delist myself? <laughs> he's just signed a contract and he's delisted straight away. And it was like, and it was before I'd signed anything. Oh. But I was like, this is why, you know, this is what happened. Um, this is where my head's at, you know. And I kind of just gave him everything. Mm. I was like, if he wants that, this is where my head was at. Yeah. I was like, if he wants that, I'm in. And from that point, it was like, I think he really respected the fact that I came in and was pretty um, honest, with, honest him, yeah. with him and be able to kind of see myself that I wasn't you know, probably my, my application wasn't good enough and yep. I was pretty happy to talk about that rather than kind of dismiss it. it um, and so I think that was where all things between him and I started. That's unbelievable. So when you got to the Saints and the, like you said, you laid all your chips on the table, you told him all this stuff, mm-hmm. what then changed for you to then actually go like, I've got to start doing this, I've got to start well, doing that and become the pl- like become the fullback that you became? Yeah, well, I think, I think by him... The way he spoke about me, the way that um, – because what had happened was Danny Frawley was working – go back a little bit. Danny Frawley was the specialist backs coach yep. at, at the Hawks. Yep. Who was friends with Sauce, mm-hmm. uh, Steve Silvani. Yep. Two good fullbacks. Two good fullbacks. And <clears throat> he said to Sauce after I'd been delisted, um, he's got something. You should have a look at him. And so Danny Frawley, Danny said, Frawley said that to yeah, Sauce. that's cool. So, yeah, believe that or not. So, believe um, it. And so um, – that got back to Ross. They watched a couple of games where I played on, actually played on Fev a few times and actually did okay. Um, and that, and Soss saw something in me and he was like, Ross, well, if, if Soss has seen something in you, you know, and kind of instilled that, like, if he sees it. You would have been walking, like, tall. You would have been like, like fucking Soss. Yeah. I'm Alex Rance. Yeah. Because <laughs> mine was the opposite. Soss didn't see anything in me. <laughs> <laughs> did not see one thing. So that's how it turned out. That, yeah, so that was the St Kilda Soss. So, yeah. yeah um, and so from that point, it was like, well, I felt like they wanted me there. Yeah. And I felt like, and I think that's all I really needed is yeah. to feel, like, welcomed and, and that the opportunity would be there if I put, applied myself. Um, and I think that's where it started. You know, I, I felt like if I 
really committed and gave everything on the field and off the field, um, that, you know, that would give me my best chance. Mm. And I suppose that got you to where you wanted to be. Uh, Ross obviously playing some good footy at the Saints. Um, those years as well, especially Saints, were a formidable team and mm. probably nearly one of the best teams to go on without getting to the end of the at the end of the yeah, day, which yeah. is obviously disappointing. But um, there was a lot of success there and some some good good times. Um, what were probably some of those highlights? Obviously, you you know the flat the grand finals that you played in. Oh yeah. nine um, was obviously a huge one against Geelong. Is it? Do any of them stick out to you the most or? Um, not really. Like I look back on those those times like pretty fondly. Um, to believe that I'd come from being delisted to playing my first eighteen games at St Kilda and winning every game. Yeah, it's surreal. Mm. I think that I, you know, I was ready to give it up, and then the next eighteen games I played, I'm playing in the top of the ladder team, key position, and undefeated at eighteen yeah. and zero. Like it's it's hard to get your head around, but like a very um. You know, I love being a part of that. So there's no like, there's no real moments. Uh, a lot of special games, but like, you know, it was all pretty. Uh, I, I value it a fair bit. What um, is memories from '09, Granny? Like the one with Geelong. So I feel like that was nearly when you guys were in your best form. Yeah. Well, um, so the parade. This, you love this story. I love stories. So parade day. Yeah. <laughs> Big day. Huge day. You Huge weren't late, were you? <laughs> <laughs> My car was late. No. Um, and so we, we've done the whole week, big, big week, you know, and then we'll um, <coughs> get to the parade. We'll like, just sit back. We'll enjoy this. Um, got out there. Hundreds of thousands of people loving life. Like, this is great. <laughs> yeah. you know, I've, I've made it. Do I? <laughs> so get through the parade. No worries. Get up on the steps. Yep. Get out. Hey, go on, everyone. Give on. The, yeah. <laughs> put the sunnies on. Oh, no yeah. worries. Going all right. And then go downstairs. Um, so this is just before we got in the cars. We'd um, had some Subway at the art gallery. Do um, you have <coughs> the crab, crab roll? So I, I, I went for something that I probably shouldn't have. Right. And so I ended up, got through the parade, got home, and I had the worst food poisoning I've ever had in my whole life the night before the grand final. And so I was on the drip in the hospital from 9 till midnight, the night before the grand final, from 6am till 9am at the ground and at half time. On grand final day. What? Did, and no one knows about that. The club does. The boys know. Now we do. Yeah, everyone <laughs> knows. That's, mate, that's unbelievable. So it was like the worst preparation you could have ever And you had imagined. a good game. Yeah, I, I did okay. Do you, think, well, do you think that sometimes, not that that's a blessing, because it's not, but sometimes going into a big game and take, taking your mind off playing... Mm. That's that's well, it's, enormous. It was it was pretty scary because like I was touch and go from actually even being able to play to play. Yeah. So um, I mean, we got to the ground. I still hadn't like Max Hudson got told the night before, bring your bags. He hadn't played all like he played a couple of games during the year. Holy bring your bags. Shit. You're gonna, probably going to play Zach. Is no good. Um, and so he's probably thinking I'm going to play, and you know, so I rocked up to the ground thinking I'm probably twenty percent chance. Hadn't drank anything. Hadn't eaten anything. Couldn't keep anything down, and <coughs> had a meeting with Ross right before the game. The boss, it was the boss, and it went to this extent. It was like, "How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm. I'm he goes, I heard you've been pretty crook. Yeah, been yeah, really crook." <coughs> he goes, "You gonna be okay?" I said, um, "You know, it should be all right." He goes, "Well, make sure you make the right fucking call." He goes, "This is gonna make or break a friendship." So not only did I feel like absolute <laughs> shit, he just put the absolute like pressure on me to like make sure, like. But it's you it, had to, it, you have to, yeah. Like it's for me to go out there and be half assed and half baked, like, yeah. Let everyone down, yeah. So I get the like, one hundred percent. You got to make the right call. Was he talking about your friendship, or I with the team, the with team, the club? It's yeah. going to be like you really because he, he's known to people in the past that has made the that wrong call and made the wrong Who, call. Was there someone? Has he said something like that I about someone? It might be. Um, Sydney, um, I can't remember. Yeah, I, I can't remember either. But there's something that may have mean, played, may have played, and they shouldn't have, and they probably shouldn't have played. And so, I think he brought up whoever that was. I can't yeah. remember who it was. Um, and so, anyway, we had a warm up pre game where the grand final day, you can't go out and do the normal warm. You got to warm up downstairs, and you get like this five minute block where you can go out in the ground. And yeah. so, I did a fitness test out in the ground, 
went out and did some sp- st- some strides and whatever. Hundred thousand people there. I walked out and I'm like, this adrenaline is kicked yeah, in. I'm yeah. like, I can do this. Like, yeah. psyched myself up. Got through all the strides. Went back down. I said, I'm in. And that's huge. And so, yeah. How would you feel in the game? I, I fe- Were you fine? I think I was okay yeah. in the game. Like, um, I probably wasn't great after two nights on the piss after. <laughs> Because I hadn't drank all and eaten the day before the game, I hadn't uh, after the game, and then it was like straight in, like, so that was probably not a great idea. Because, but in the game, I, considering what had happened and that I hadn't eaten fueled, like, I think the adrenaline, the natural, you know, the the emotion of yeah, the game, you just get, get through. How um, crazy though are some of those stories of the things that like goes on in teams that play it that people don't know oh that's right yeah like, and no one would have ever known that no you know and um and, and that's why i'm proud of like and, and you don't want people to know you because you like you hold it to yourself yeah, and it's like you, you by doing those things you, you can convince yourself that you can do things you never thought would be possible you know and there were games where i got injured um prio days where i did my pcl in the first quarter and i played out the game because you'd been I'd, there. I'd done that and I've done that. You know, I kind of reassure myself that you can just get through this, you know, and missed eight weeks afterwards. But yeah. like, I'm like, once you do it once, you kind of really steal yourself to <sighs> be able to dig in when you need to. That's pretty hectic, man. That's it's crazy. Yeah, it's to think back, like, it, it's the worst prep you could, you could ever hope. You want to enjoy the moment. And yeah. I was just like, you know, throwing up blood and, you know, both ends. It was no good. Was there ever, like, because I know that a lot of those coaches back in those days were big on sort of like, like not late calls but like that always get people to warm up like Tommy always tells me that he was so close to paying in the Frio granny which I actually think is true mm. um is there any other sort of guys that were sort of on the edge that day that not that I know of I wouldn't have known that day because yeah. I, I couldn't think of anything else except <laughs> but sometimes the players don't even know because no no and they would have kept it you know besides the emergencies and who, who could have potentially play yeah i think ross and the team would have tried to keep it away from everyone i don't want that getting like into my housemates says. would have like bakes and um jack would have known yeah um but other than that um but it was it's hardcore like at the club on the drip the night before in the morning like it, no good that's scary yeah crazy but great day besides from the ending you know? yeah like imagine that if it could have because i know that like for a fact and it's not my story to tell so i won't but i'll get these guys on one day like you know regardless of what happened the reason I wanted the Giants to win the flag last year was because I knew what was going on behind the doors. Mm-hmm. Like I knew how cooked some of these boys were mm-hmm. and the risks that they took going into that game. Like obviously Lockie Whitfield's one that's, mm-hmm. um, you know, well documented of what he did, but there was, you know, he was sort of taking the limelight for like yep. four or five other guys, yep. um, which, you know, one day if they're ready to tell that, it'll come out. But it's pretty crazy. Like you said, like I would have never have known that. Yeah, um, and it was... The moment in the game with the toe poke and everything, like I was the person that came off Mooney, spoiled the ball onto Scarlett's foot. You know, like I had the chance to, like from what had happened that night before in the morning, I had a chance to like change the, the game forever. The game forever. And like inches, a game of inches, you know, and it hits his foot and bounces straight over my <laughs> head. But like that's what I mean. Like you put yourself in that situation for that moment. Um, but no, there's no regrets from no, those you days. Like we, you learn from it. We, we rocked up both like 09, 10. We rocked up. We, we played our hearts out. You know, the, the replay, we were, we were battered and we weren't. But like the, the draw and the, the, the 09 granny, we were, we were awesome. You yeah. know, and that's why we've, we've got such a strong bond and connection still. Because yeah. we know we, we laid it all out there. We weren't good enough on the day, um, but um, we, we put it all out there. As we talk about those years, it's obviously in good teams, there's obviously good times as well because teams that win can have fun off the field. Mm. You, you know, when you're losing every week, it's not – you can't really go out and have fun. Um, 2010 footy trip. Yep. You go to Texas. Yep. You have some good times there with the boys. Um, now, you've self-proclaimed the nickname Cupid because you've – single-handedly, you, you were telling me off air that you've set up Rui with his – now wife. Oh nine. This is after oh nine. John Granny. Yeah. So this is after John Granny. Mm. After you've had gastro. Yep. Food poisoning. Straight to Vegas. Straight to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> and you've just set up Rui with his new wife. Tell us that yeah. story. Yeah. Because the way you, oh, I'm going to be interested to see if you tell it the way you told me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was. Um, I was in some really fine form. Yeah. Um, I, I left nothing in the tank. In the tank every day. Good. 
I was one of those guys. <laughs> you know, I might finish the day at 4 p.m. Yep. and be asleep during the night, yep. but I was leaving it all out there every day. Yep, yep, good. Um, I'm there for a few days. Like, let's just make it most of it. Yep. We were there for eight days. Oh, it's a big trip. That's a big trip. Like, a big, big trip. 16 blokes, eight <laughs> days. So it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I, would, I think it would have been day maybe three or four. Yeah. Um, and we said to most of the boys, if you can get up about 11 o'clock, get down the pool, we'll, um, we'll meet and we'll kind of get the day started. <clears throat> Good spot to start. So I think I may have had an early night the night before because yep. I'd, I'd kind of put myself in a bit of a yep. shit one. Good. Um, got up early. Went for a run. Early bird gets the worm, you know. I like that one. And so um, went downstairs to get the worm. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, had a fruit salad and a couple <laughs> of pina coladas. And um, sitting by the pool, all, I reckon I, I was about 95, kilo, uh, 95 kilos when I got there. I was 90 kilos by this stage. Yeah. So I just hadn't eaten, you know. Plus like, the food poisoning. Plus the food poisoning, exactly right. And I was like just fading away because like when I'm hung, I can't eat, you no. know. And, and so... And, You've preach, got no choice. Preach. Dinner. Can't get dinner down. Yeah. So it was just, it was no good for a skinny kid like me. Yeah. So I was, I was parading around like a skeleton down at the pool. <laughs> <laughs> the chicks were digging it, obviously. <laughs> and there was, a, uh, there was a, a, a bunch of about 20 girls just sitting around the pool. Um, and so I was just was laying there, obviously. And a couple of girls swam over to me and just started talking to me. And like the accent, and, you know, where you're from, Australia, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Slowly, but surely, the boys started to drift down, and I'd, I'd kind of crowded a little, you know. Here we the go, the passage boys. Yeah. Is, is the passage, um, and so quickly by the time Rui had got down there, and a few other boys, like I drifted off back into the background again. Yep. <laughs> Skeletal, <laughs> take it over, boys. Skeletal <laughs> wasn't, <laughs> you know, you know, the apple of their eye anymore. I had the, you know, the buff Rewalt yeah. walking down. You know, no worries. I was just picturing that because you can you imagine like Nick Rewalt walking down. Top off, yeah. Like I would, Ten. Go, I'd go for that. Ten. Yeah. Or you got me, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Both great bikes, but you know what I'd go for? I was me because I was the first there. Exactly, yeah. you were hey. the one. Early bird gets a worm. That's right. Up early, <laughs> he's a go getter. You know, um, and so um, introduced him. Yep. Um, and then the last three days of the the trip, we were at the sixteen boys, twenty of the sorority girls from Texas all on their, their trip together and we just went out all together 35 40 of us that's great the nightclubs and they kind of um kicked it off um and then kind of kept in contact post that yeah so well done yeah that's thanks. you yeah so you come back from that trip um and i'm not sure on the exact times but pretty much from there is it 2011 you go to freo um, after 2011. After 2011. So how did that work in terms of Ross left? Did you stay a year at Saints or did you no. go with him? So what happened was, um, so we got through 2011. We'd had a really shocking start to the year. I think we'd, um, I think we'd won three. We were three and seven by the end of the middle of the year. Lenny had done his knee round one. Um, by the end, we, we'd got going again. We had a really average start to the year. Mm -hmm. um, but... Mind you, after the two big years of the grand final years, it, that was probably the hardest year to get yourself up again because you're like fuck, not again. It's like because yeah. it's hard. Like because after the first year, you're still motivated to yeah. like we can do this, yeah. but then it's like you fail again, and it's like God, you've got to do it again, again. And, it, and that was where it really kind of felt like that was a a moment where everything needed to go right. Round one, Lenny did his knee, and it was like, oh my oh, God, God, you know, what else can go wrong? And so that was where um, by the end of the year, we built it back up. Made finals, lost to Sydney in the first final. Um, probably shouldn't have, you know, we didn't really deserve to go that far in that year, um, to be honest. Um, so I finished that year, I played most of the games, still cemented my team, spot in the team and got to the end of the year and there was a, a salary cap drama uh, at the club. And so I think a lot of the contracts have been back um, back-ended and yep. whatever with a lot of incentives and... It was really putting a lot of pressure on the guys that were on the fringe. Mm -hmm. And so I'd come out of my first three years thinking this next contract was going to be my my moneymaker. Big year. I might yeah. earn an average wage this year. Yeah. <laughs> you might not have to pay red yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I came out of the year thinking I've played nearly 70 games in three years, you know, played finals, you know, I've done a good job. Um, finally going to hopefully earn a, a wage where I can buy a house and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Got to the end of that year and all these drama was going on in the admin side of things and salary cap and um, 
I kind of got the feeling that there was pressure being put on me and whatever. And so I'd gone in and asked for um, X amount of dollars. Um, and I pretty much got told that um, I was going to earn the same, maybe less than what I'd earned the year before because of what was going They didn't have the money and they wanted to fit everyone in mm. at that time. And coming from where, you know, that, that what we spoke about before about f- wanting to feel like you were um, wanted. wanted and I got to a point where I thought I felt like I was mm. and then got that, had that discussion where maybe I'm not. Um, I was really disappointed. I didn't want to leave. Like I finally got my opportunity and kind of cracked my spot and um, J- July of that year, Frio had approached my management because they knew I was out of contract and I'd Told them, yeah, not interested. Yeah. Saying, yeah, that's saying some here Happy for good, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, and all this stuff started to bubble away, and um, I was like, God, oh, it's not going to happen. I'm probably not, you know, I'm not going to get that contract. You know, I'm still going to have to fight and claw. And mm. you know, I've been on a rookie contract. I've been on, you know, less than way less than average wage. Mm. And um, one of three years, I would only get even two. So um, I told my manager to said can you see free i was still there and they said and he said yeah they're still they're still around and so i was like do i do i push the button on that you know Tickle just it. met my missus i was you know so i was 10 months into that mm. um and things were going really well with her um so that that pressure as well um and before i knew it um i woke up one morning and ross had gone to Frio. And it was like, what the fuck? What's going on here? All right, I've got to ask because do you think bubbling away at that the whole time could Ross have been sending messages from no, Frio? No, no, no. So Ross, Ross messaged me the day he went to Frio. Yeah. So they've asked me about you. They said that there's, there's something happening. The, the, he didn't know that that was happening. Yeah. Had no idea. Yeah. Um, what are you thinking? And that was pretty much like the stars aligning kind of moment where yeah. I was like, it's maybe, maybe it is. Um, which is hard on your relationship because when you with it, just met a girl that you're kind of really keen on, it's yeah. like to get her after 10 months to uproot and go to Perth, lose, it, leave all your friends, leave all your family. Mm-hmm. It's like, God, you know, but you got to do what you got to do. What would you say? I said, I'm going, you yeah. know, but, and once Ross had left and, and cause she knew that, um, that, Ross and I had a great relationship and she, yeah. she wanted me to, you know, have, have that security with, with Ross and that sort of thing. So she was backing me to do it, but I, I still felt that pressure with her to not um, – I didn't want her to leave her family and friends. It's, it's a big thing. You know? Big trip. Um, and so, um, yeah, pressed the button and said, heave ho. That's huge. Yeah. It's a big trip, man. What was – do you think that, like, in terms of all the stuff that you'd been through previous to that as well and you talked about, like, you, you're just starting to sort of find your way, but previous to that, like – being in the public eye, being in Melbourne, having that stigma still of, you know, not still, but you mm. touched on, you would still had that sort of flashbacks of things. Do you think getting to Perth and getting out of that bubble, even though you're going into another bubble, was that mm. was that a fact, a juicy factor as well? Not or really. was that sort of still? Not really, no, because it, it was still bubbling away at yeah. St Kilda. Like I was still dealing with all that, you know, still dealing with um, you know, abuse on Facebook, all that sort of stuff every week, you know, mm. like it never ended. Yeah. You know, even by the end, my, my last year, 14 years in, I was still getting, <laughs> still copping it. Jesus. So, um, there wasn't the thinking, I'm going to leave and that's going to go away. I thought, you know, I, by just that time, it's just part of what I, you know, yeah. what I was dealing with. So, um, yeah, it wasn't part of the decision. Um, a story I did forget to touch on. I don't know if this was where this was at. It's hard to, to keep track, but talking about the, um, the hate, stuff there was obviously public um stuff but there was also stuff from commentators and media personalities mm. and robert walls was one that made some public comments about you and i don't know if this was was this when you were at saints is it st kilda this yeah. is st kilda and it was it wasn't just a comment it, it was, was like it was just constant every time constant. i get the ball like yeah. my, my parents were just like They'd watch the footy and just be re- like ropeable. My yeah. aunties, because it was just like, oh, you know, every time, every time, and it was regardless of what was happening, even if you're playing well yeah, or doing what he just had this something. Yeah, he had a he had a book written and it was already just that was what yeah. it was, and so it was that was why you know yeah, you can continue the story. Well, no, this is great because it's something that I suppose it's something everyone wants to do, mm-hmm. 
And it'd be interesting to get your topic on it because you tweeted back. Where, where basically, I think it was when Channel 10 lost the footy. Yep. And you tweeted, you said, Channel 10 not showing the footy next year. Finally, Robert Sourpuss Walls is out of a job. Thank God, Karma is a bitch, buddy. Which, fantastic. But short and sweet. Short and sweet. <laughs> to the point. I don't think there's any misconception in what you're saying in that tweet. It was it was very well read. How did what was like the backlash from that? Did you get the satisfaction out of what you wanted, or because um, he actually said to you, oh, "Well, didn't he love that?" No. So what happened? Okay. Was <laughs> Channel <laughs> Channel Ten came back and said, um, "We both might be out of a job." Channel Ten or someone from Channel Ten, I can't remember who it was, and said we'd probably both be out of a job next year or something like that, something along those lines. But the thing was, I sent that tweet and I went to Bali that second. I turned my phone off and I went oh to Bali. Oh, God. And How so could you do that and not just think about what was going to happen? And so then I got to Bali a couple of days later and I turned the phone on and it went absolutely bonkers. So good. The boys were like, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> you got him. And it just went off and on and on. But I didn't know what had happened here because yeah. I was away. Yeah. And so... Um, so what, what I wasn't happened? doing it for satisfaction. No, you know, oh I was you doing it because it was like, it was just like an emotional reaction. Like, yeah. you know, you never get criticism from anyone. Yeah. You're happy to dish it. Yes. Which is a lot of, a lot of media commentators at times. It's like happy to dish it. But when things happen or, you know, like they wouldn't be willing to cop it themselves. Yeah. You know, so they don't think of the human element sometimes. And that's what we talked about. People think of that. Footy players of, and just anyone's a robot when you're criticising, yeah. but there actually is the, the human element to it. Yeah, like we watch the footy. My parents watch the footy. My yeah. cousins watch the footy. My sister watches the footy. How how do you think they feel every time that I touch the ball, go near it, or do something, or I give a free kick? It's like, oh, Zach, well, you always, you know, yeah, like it's just this. How, how good did that feel though? Like it was, yeah. When I knew that there was a bit of a bite back, I yeah. was like, yeah. So what happened with the bite back? Was it just did he? You ever hear anything back from him, no, or was no, it more no. just? It was. Channel 10. Yeah, it was just, yeah. Su- yeah. I didn't really feel the, you know, there was a news article, I think, yeah. here, but I was gone. I didn't, I didn't read it or anything. That's so. great. <laughs> and, and post that, would, did you ever go and so, were you off that after that? Well, the thing was, yeah, once I got to, um, to Frio, um, I had to get rid of all my, my social medias and that. I had, I had to get rid of um, Instagram, um, change my name on Facebook, <coughs> profile photos, because I was getting like um, abusive messages on facebook talking about my daughter in my profile photos and that's like every week two or three private messages every week you know and talk yeah and i was just like what what am i doing you know what 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 are these people doing like why do they you know have to spend five five minutes of their life writing that message um so anyway i'd i'd got rid of i when i got to free i said to mickey barlow who loves his social media I said, how about you run my Twitter for a couple of days and see how you go? And it <coughs> probably two days in, he goes, fuck that. <laughs> and he just... Too much. much. It's just too much. Like, it's just ridiculous. Like, it, it's, I know we talk about this and, and people bring it up a lot about social media trolls, but this is a... to cop. Not that I ever really... I never experienced... Like, I've obviously copped hate, but not to the extent you have. And then to be able to actually persevere mentally and keep going and going and still perform you got to be fucking proud of yourself like that yeah. meant you, you you must have some serious mental resilience yeah well that's that's how thick w- is that skin like yeah well that's the one thing that i when i look back on everything i'm mo- the most proud of because yeah. i know that um quite easily i could have gone off the other side you know and and kind of reacted and done something wrong or you know even in terms of like just lost confidence yeah, exactly yeah. like your mental state you know um I'm proud that, you know, I built the tools and got to a point where um, all I really valued was what was internal, you mm. know, my, my teammates, how yeah. they thought about me. Um, every time I played footy, all I wanted to do was be a good teammate. I didn't really care about my own game. I didn't care about stats. I didn't care about having how many kicks and handballs I got. I wanted to make Sam Fisher the best man on the ground. I wanted to make Tommy the best man on the ground. Yeah. You know, like that's all I cared about. Mm. I played Waffle in my last year. All I wanted to do was get Matty Tabernard to kick four or five and just terrorise his opponent because I got more enjoyment out of that. So that's where, like, uh, the enjoyment, uh, all the external noise is just became just bullshit. It's unreal and it probably simplifies things for you a, lot, yeah. a, a bit as well because if sometimes if guys, you know, they don't get that sort of feedback, they still keep thinking you've got to do mm. extraordinary things yeah. to feel satisfaction. Yeah. Um, and it showed, mate, the way you played because obviously, like you said, you were the sort of guy that, 
even just watching anyone that watched footy knew that you were a team player. Mm-hmm. Um, especially at Freo, there was yourself and Alex Silvani. I just love watch, watching him play. Mm. You both had that kamikaze style of play, like come forward king, um, which if people don't know what come forward is, it's basically like in team defence. And Ross was probably the pioneer of yeah. come forward yeah, defence. At Clarko. So there you go. You've, got, you've had it from two of your you know, big I coaches. Taught, I taught Ross. You taught Ross. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Sorry about that. On the record, you taught Ross. So come forward king is like playing defence but aggressive in front of your opponent. And yep. if the ball's there, you, you're coming forward to... Yeah, it's attack. just about yeah, more of a system rather than um, you're playing Direct in opponent. a connected way. You know, yeah. um, if the ball goes over that your teammate's head, you're there to support him in a high ball exactly. rather than being just. And we'll get to some it. overlay footage of this because there are some highlights that I like. There's some massive, massive hits. I think one's on, one of them's on a Geelong player. It might be Paul Chapman. Um, Is it Shannon Byrne? Maybe Stokes. Stokes. Yeah. Okay, so one's on Stokes. That was my first game at Frio. Was it? Yeah. So that set the standard. Yeah. That was a big come forward. Yeah. The, n- the next one, though, which I think that this might be still rattling this bloke, and I think you might have been in this guy's head forever, is Jack Darling. That was, yeah, that was a pre-season game. <laughs> that was a pre-season <laughs> game. Mate, you've genuinely killed him. Yeah, but you know, hit the ball. You took the ball. It was, it was unbelievable. It was, it was um, one thing I always did was play on the edge. I'd love to... The physical side of the game I love to be able to um, I was never the most talented person on the field But I needed to find an edge Any other way mm. You know um, Yes I was 94 kilos I was never massive But I knew By throwing your body in at every contest And elbows And elbows And just making your, your opponent earn every kick You're building your own brand Like If you're, if you're easy to play on um, Tom Hawkins is going to come back next, next, next year And go Oh Go again. Go again. It's a mental yeah, game. He's not, gonna, he's not going to hit me over the back of the head. But, like, if you do it over and over and over, you build your reputation. Like, that's... And that, yeah. Um, and that's why I struggle to watch footy a lot these days because it's just, like, it's lost that real mongrel edge. Cunning side of... Yeah. yeah. You, you, yeah. Um, well, some people will probably be happy about that. But I love that side of the game where it's, like, bodies flying, you know, intensity in the air. Toby's you know. nearly the only person, like Toby Green's probably yeah. the only person I can think of that yeah, you make You're making every every person earn every kick. Yeah. You know, and that's why... And I Jeremy like. Cameron's pretty good at yeah. that as well. Um, there's a there's a good clip of me on Jezza. Yeah, you broke... Did you break his nose? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. My elbow did. <laughs> your elbow. <laughs> your, mate, I'm telling you now, your elbows um, were the sharpest elbows in the business. Yeah, and that was... That it was could come back of clumsiness, but I don't think it was. It was... It was... Um, yeah, part clumsy, part, you know, I, I meant every one, but, like, if you act clumsy all the time, people just think it's... Yeah, <laughs> they just think it's clumsiness. <laughs> um, what, who were some of, like, we talk about their opponents, like, fullback, it's a lonely position sometimes. Mm. Who were some of the guys, like, probably, who'd you have your best battles with? Like, in terms of, like, who'd you go, fuck, this guy's, mm. like, the hardest guy to play on, but you'd always <laughs> sort of, like, love to play on them? Yeah. Who's a guy that maybe that you... Tower, like who's you your bunny? You can say who's your bunny. Yeah, who's your love playing on? Right. That's what I want to know. Okay, to be honest. But give me the first one, and then right. give me your bunny next. Well, the best, best player I ever played on, I always said was Fev, Alouche. Um, I just thought he's he had more talent than anyone I'd ever played on. Mm. Um, his speed, his hands. Um, only thing. He would just talk to me behind the play and talk about weird shit, <laughs> you know. And I'm just like, mate, just focus on the game. You'll be a superstar. Yeah. Don't talk about my misses and this yeah. and that, you know. Like, just just get it done, mate. You are a genuine star. And like, so I'm this young kid playing on him, and he's like talking about random stuff. And I'm like, is this what people do out in yeah. the footy pit? Yeah. And then then he'll mark one on the junction, and he'll slot it from fifty, and then he'll slot another. Like, but I genuinely have always said that he was probably the most talented. Do I think, did, do you reckon he did that though? Was that like a part of I him playing at his best or was he just I chatting? Don't know. Just I wanted don't to know. chat. I just reckon, I, d- I don't know. I yeah. couldn't play that well. <laughs> yeah. It might be him, you know, yeah. like that's, but, um, but he was a genuine star. Um, in terms of like the modern day, um, I had really good battles with um, Josh Kennedy, mm. um, especially over in Frio in the derbies. Yep. Um, Derby. Derby, yeah, I always forget. I'm from both. I'm from both states. Yeah. So I say it however I want to yep. say it. Um, um, had some good battles with Tommy Hawkins, especially in the in the finals. Travis Cloak, um, and in terms of a, of a bunny, I never really had a bunny. Like, fullback such a, a topsy turvy position. Like, you can have a great day on 
a bloke one week and then get absolutely embarrassed. You can't talk a lot of crap when yeah, you play no, fullback. No, no, no. Because the last five minutes, yeah. you probably get a little bit out. Oh, we, three minutes. Eh? Saints, Saints days was great because like we'd get up by seven, eight goals in the first quarter yeah. and then we just strangle the game. You know? yeah. So you could probably get away with it. <laughs> I never did. I was never a big chirper. You yeah. know, I, I'd give a little bit of niggle behind the play. You more just straight face. Just, cause I, I, I would never talk. I would never see, ever. That, that, I was, when I played footy and, you know, obviously not to the level of, as much as you did, but like I, I'd love talking to my opponent because mm. it got them off. Mm. Whereas if I had a guy that didn't talk to me, I was like rattled. I didn't know what to do because I was like, "Fuck!" If he's just like, "What's he thinking?" If yeah. he's not talking to me, and he, yeah. if like I'm obviously speaking to you, you know what I'm saying, and you are just choosing to totally ignore me. It like really rattled me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was always like, "You shake my hand, I'll hit you in the chest." I'm not shaking your hand before the game. I'll shake your hand after the game, but I'm not shaking your hand before the game. That's scary. See, that would rattle me. But it's away. like, what's the point? You, well, you're out there to compete. No, I know, right. but I like to do, I like to do it because then it showed that they had a human side. No, no, that, you're just looking for weakness. No, I'm looking for their weakness. Exactly, yeah, exactly. right. Yeah. So when I go, out so and if I'm you did it to me, I'd shoot myself. I and have I, no. And I'm, I'm playing on blokes that are always better than me. Yeah, and true. And so, am I going to go? Oh, good luck, mate. I'm like, I've, I've got to do everything I can to stop having five kicked on me today. Yeah, I haven't slept last night because I'm playing on you. Like, I'm not coming out here to shake your hand. That's sick. Like. That was footy for me. I couldn't be that person where it's like, oh, I have a laugh and you kick one on me. Oh, have a look at that one. Like, no, nah, I can't. Um, That's a good insight, man. Yeah. But that was my life. You know, I was never the most, I was never, I'm not Alex Rance. Mm. I can go out and have a, have a laugh because I'm better than you. Yeah. You know, I'm playing on Buddy. You know, like, I've, I, I can't sleep the night before because, you know, I could lose the game single handedly tomorrow. It's a, it's a shit feeling. It's a, Bit of anxiety going into it's a lot of anxiety, yeah. and that's why I don't miss footy. Yeah, like I miss I miss the the brotherhood side of things. I love not the competition and yeah. out the competitiveness, but I don't miss the the stress and the anxiety. No, it, it's hard work. Like it is like, um, and you and you pile that on with like the scrutiny, mm. the media, the, the public, social media stuff. It's it's hard work. Oh mate, it's you know, and again, like not not to that that I ever had to your extent, but it was something that I seriously battled with. Like even just. It wasn't even the media thing for me. It's just that this is your job, and like, if you're not performing, like, what are you doing? Like, yep. why are you actually here? Yeah. Now, last story about Fro, um, and this one again, I won't name names, but it might have come from Mick Barlow. <sighs> um, it's a story late, late in the season. Um, you may have forgotten, and basically, look, basically, you might have had a few cordials. Oh, I feel like you're painting me in the wrong. Okay, let's, yeah. The, these are probably the, the two worst moments. We, 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 but we like talking about the, yeah. those moments. Lessons have been learned. <laughs> okay, lessons have been learned. That, yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not that person anymore. No, no. I've definitely grown. Yeah, 100%. Okay, and go. we can acknowledge. So, Proceed. Um, you've grown from this. Yeah. You're a better person. <laughs> but sometimes you've got to let your hair down. Yeah. And um, this night maybe you did um, with a couple of the boys and you may have, Woken up in someone's front garden. Well, not in the front garden on okay. the on the curb. On okay, the, sorry, on the, the curb. Um, what do you call it? Nature curb strip. Type. Nature strip. Yeah. yeah. Um, can't so fear. can't fear there. In a beautiful uh, East Frio um, street, um, the boys had decided we we have one last hurrah because we're coming into finals. Yep. Um, <clears throat> the thing was that there was a little bit of grey area whether we were allowed to be drinking on that <laughs> on this weekend because it, it was our last eight day break, but. There happened to be some grey area whether, you know, this was... Because eight-day breaks for everyone listening, you, you that's when you're allowed to let the hair down. You'd kind of bank that one. So yeah. There's three weeks to go for the year. We're like, oh, we'll get to that one, then we'll stop drinking. Finals. But supposedly there'd been a conversation earlier that, you know, we had a, you know, a month off prior to this. So, anyway, we'd made a group decision to go out for a couple of sherbets, as you, as you put it before, um, and... One turned to two, turned to three, four, you know, big night. Um, and so I I think I had lost my phone or misplaced my phone at that point. Um, Left it at home. It's funny, like, it's a very steel side but It's very relevant in you know, it this is. moment, you know. He um, could have learned from this. I knew how he felt. I've never walked out the wrong, uh, walked out the wrong door. So the, so when, was, when Eddie said people do this all the time, he's not wrong. I was nodding my head. Yeah. <laughs> but... but I hadn't walked out. I've never walked out the wrong door. Okay. That's one thing. Yeah. I, no. Yeah. That ain't happening. 
Um, and so um, I'd woken up um, to um, some uh, police officers at my feet saying, you okay, mate? Um, <laughs> I was like, yes, I was just having a, a, a rest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, move on. Yeah, no worries. So I just sat up for a second, and I'm like, "Oh God, where am I?" I <laughs> still couldn't figure out because I was in a, I was in a, I was on a main road, so I was like, "This could be anywhere." Yeah, because I'm still not a local. I'm like, oh, "This could be anywhere." Um, so what had happened was, I didn't have a phone, so I was like, oh, "I've got to try and get a cab." Um, and so I walked. I saw a lady looking at her window, um, and. I was like, tried to wave it down, and I've run into the the front yard. This is like, I don't, would have been five daylight. Yeah, and um, knocked on the door. No one answered. I'm like, I saw you in the window. Yeah, yeah. And so um, left it there. The cops um, had come back. Is everything okay? And I said, Yeah. I said I was just trying to get the phone. Uh, Asked the lady for a phone if I could uh, make a phone call to get a cab, but I don't have a phone. <laughs> like, oh, we can give you a ride home. So this was before COVID restrictions. Of Back of the Divi van was perfectly healthy. Yeah, of course. Um, <clears throat> and so um, I said, ride would be fantastic. I was only about five five minutes from home. Mm. Got in the back and got driven home. And so the thing which was the worst part of this story was <laughs> my in-laws had come to stay with me for the weekend. Oh, no. And so I was like, I'll knock on the door quietly so they don't wake up. My mother-in-law answered the door. <laughs> it's the police car drove off in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, it, it wasn't my, my finest moment. No. But so what had happened, so we went into the club on the Monday. This, mind you, the, the police thing wasn't an issue. It never got brought up. No. You know, the, the club got called. Um, because the lady... They just thought I was, you know, she, she recognised who I was. She was a Freo member. She a, yeah, she was a <laughs> member. And I think she thought I was... Um, Trying to ransack <laughs> yeah. her house uh, for all my Frio badges, yeah. and so um, the club found out about that. Um, like I wasn't in trouble, didn't get in yeah. trouble or anything. Yeah, didn't get arrested. Or, um, and so then the grey area had come out on the Monday. Like, should we have been drinking? Um, and then so Ross had come in and said, "All right, everyone sit down." Mm. It was tense. Cut the air with a. No, yeah. it was really tense and yes. we knew what was coming. So the boys I was out, out with, so Nick Lower decided he's going to get up and apologise. Oh, God. He's going to say oh. something. I just wanted to say something. Prior to Ross, he wanted to cut Ross off first. Yeah, well, he didn't know when, but he wanted to. Yeah. yeah, But he was going to be the one. So Ross got on a bit of a rant, you know, boys have been out, you know, we, we thought we were clear, it was there a grey area. May have been, may not have been. Put your hand up if you'd had a drink. So about... 20 hands went up, right? And so everyone else come up the front. So whatever. So they got the front. God. And they go, all right, who had two drinks? Keep Come up the front if you had two. A couple of drop, drift up. Four. Um, six. And so one of the boys who was a renowned piss head walks up the front and Rossi goes, come on. <laughs> he goes, you didn't have six and call it a night. <laughs> So eight, ten, twelve, yeah. and we have still got our hands yeah. up, you know. And and Nick Nick Lowell decided th- this would be his moment. Oh no! And so he goes, he stands up. He goes, um, I just want to say, and he goes, fucking save it. <laughs> and he just sat back to his chair. <laughs> Could you imagine the confidence it's taken oh, to get the willpower to stand up and say something? He goes, and I just want to, I just want to apologise. Fucking save it, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> and he just sits down totally deflated. <laughs> and anyway, so, yeah, it ended up, yeah, we, we weren't too clear on the, no. it should have been black and white. There was grey too area. much grey. Grey. Hate grey area. No, you can't have it. You can't have it. Um, last but not least, obviously, beautiful girlfriend at that time. Mother-in-law was, uh, family was there, but you end up getting married. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. When was that? 20? Uh, t- 2012. 2012. God, that's ages ago. Yeah. That's Nearly time. nine years. Yeah, nearly. Um, married in Vegas. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yes. How was that? Yeah, was, that, that was, was that was that a like a planned, planned wedding? Yeah, we yeah. planned. We planned it. Um, we were going on our um, end of year trip. A um, couple of the St Kilda boys, um, Jack Stephen, Sammy Fisher, Rob Eddy. Again, um, we were going to Vegas anyway. <coughs> um, 
and my wife and a couple of her friends were, just, were coming with us. And so we were talking about getting married and all that sort of stuff and um, the, the conversation came up, why, why don't we um, have a bit of a surprise wedding or we do something a bit different and, um, and it floated the idea that we could surprise everyone when we go on our, on our footy trip. And so um, planned it. She took her, her mum's wedding dress that, um, so she fit into it perfectly. That's crazy. Um, and then so we had to go there and register our, our marriage before we got married in secret the day we got there. Um, and then we went out for dinner the first night. Um, and so we got everyone around the table and everyone was trying to make a toast. And I said, like, I was so nervous. So I was, yeah. It was a real weird feeling because I, I didn't want to ruin people's trip. Yeah, because like you go oh, to Vegas, you know, and you're like, but you don't. I didn't know. You don't that. know. It yeah. never happened to you. Yeah. So it's like, am I like interrupting yeah. people's <laughs> yeah. like chance yeah. to really let loose? And so I'm like, oh god, do, I, do we do it? You know, yeah. I'm an anaring. Someone goes to make a toast. I said, sit the fuck down. So I got to say something. And so anyway, I said, um, just want to let you guys know that we're Sheena and I have decided that we're we're gonna um, get married. Um, you guys are the first to know, and they're like celebrating. That would have erupted. And they're like, and I said, oh, one more thing, we're we're doing it tomorrow, and they go shut the fuck up. Oh. And I said, yeah, we, we're getting married at the Stratosphere tomorrow at one o'clock. Um, so make sure you you get there with your suits on or something close to a yeah, suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they're off. They're like, this is the vest. You know? and, so and so it, it took off. And so we like had our kind of bucks hens together. Went out um, that night. Had a pretty massive one. Finished up at about three. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my wife finished up at about 12. Did you stay? Did you do the traditional? Not really, no. Okay. no. It we, a, it's not really traditional. It wasn't a traditional yeah. kind <laughs> of thing. Tradition. So um, we ended up, um, I went to bed at about 4 a.m. 4 and they, they kicked on. And so 11 um, a.m. when I told them to come and meet me at the room, they banged on the door and I looked through the little door hole and instead of having suits on, they've got animal suits on. So they've gone to the costume shop. Oh. And one's a cactus, one's a yeti, and one's a um, a penguin. You know, absolutely like epic weekend, the best thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. Um, no pressure, no stress, no guest list, no drama, no. Yeah. You know, all for me. It was all about me and all about my wife. You know, and we we just went there and did our own thing. Yes, you miss out on having your family there and everything, but I go to weddings now. And I go, God, just too stressful it's just too much yeah, you know there's yeah. so much going on and it's one day and it's just you're not getting anything it's it's for everyone else yeah it's not for you that's sick and so anyway got married in vegas so that's my claim to fame so um that's uh that's how i roll that's unreal man um i might do that i'm engaged but corona you no, know we didn't get engaged that was the thing oh no. you, didn't, you just go straight to the wedding so that's why no one knew oh well that would have been good to add that in Oh, sorry, I didn't. I didn't <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that's yeah. impressive. Yeah, so we decided that we're going to get married without telling anyone. So that's when we. When so we you know, you weren't even. Yeah, right. Well, that that is big news. Yeah. So, mate, we've touched on a lot. Um, just lastly, what's what's next for Zach Dawson? Um, an incredible career, mate. And I'm not just saying that. Like highs, lows. Um, but the man that you've come out of it is absolutely incredible. Um, you've had such a, a balanced lifestyle your whole way through, obviously studying, which we touched on earlier, but it sort of led to your post footy now. Like you can go either way. Like you were doing a little bit of work with Carlton with the yep. Next Gen Academy. Yep. Um, also about to finish your finance degree. Yep. What do you see your life? Um, you know, obviously you got your two kids or three? Two now. Two yeah. kids. Yep. Um, what do you see life like in the next um, chapter? <coughs> yeah, I was really um, – coming out of footy, I never expected to go back into footy. I was probably – once I finished footy, I was like, oh, I just need a bit of a, a break. So um, I was ready for the next chapter and whatever's to come next and kind of found my way back into footy um, yeah, through Carlton uh, at the start of last year mm. um, and took to it to duck to water. So um, really loved, especially the NGA stuff, I really loved that side of footy. Um, loved the admin side, um, which is probably where I see my future. I'd love to be able to um, pursue that long-term um, so when you say admin side, like I'd list like management, yeah, list stuff? management, general yeah. manager of footy, like yeah. I love, I'd love to be able to get to that one point, yeah, at one point in time. So um, how you get, there's never a, a kind of direct line to getting to that role. Yeah. So um, you look at Simon Lloyd at Geelong; he's been through coaching club psych. You know, mm. like he's been through such a, you can't, you can't just pick a one way yeah. and do it. Yeah. So, um, but long term, that's what I'd love to get to. And mm. I think by doing my finance, having a finance background as well as a footy background. Um, 15 years in footy and then having my, my finance and my, my commerce background 
I'm hoping that that can keep my options open at least definitely in footy. So um, that's that's the aim. Um, who knows? Um, but as I said, um, I'm trying to keep my options open, and and I think that um, yeah, through all the experiences, these were probably some of the low lights. But no, um, these are the highlights. Um, depends how you look at it, but like. <laughs> All these things have really kind of helped me, um, you know, um, prepare myself that you know I can get through a lot of a lot of crap. Mm. Um, and, and going into the working world, you understand like you can deal with feedback, you can deal with criticism, you can you can bounce back. You can and, and losing my job this year um, through all the COVID situation, um, I, I attacked that straight away. I was like, I'm going straight back to uni, go yeah. full time, smash out a full full time semester. Um, just because that's just how I'm now kind of naturally, it's been ingrained in me from, you know, the habits that I built throughout my footy career. So, um, yeah, whatever. Ha- I don't know. Yeah, but I am kind of feel like I'm prepared for whatever happens. Yep. I love just that last bit that you said about what footy's taught you. And I know we've touched on it a lot, but um, not that, you know, I've had a, a one-tenth of your career and your experience, but I feel that, and mirrored to what your thoughts are, like how much those experiences have set you up for what's next. Mm-hmm. And if anyone can be set up for what's next, uh, it's you. Because you've fucking done it all, mate. Like the, As I said earlier, and I don't know how much better to say this, but like the person you are and like from going through some of those things that you did go through early days, like it, it just speaks like absolute wonders of your character. And I'm so excited for people to hear this and to listen to your story because it's, it's honestly one of the best stories I've heard. And I couldn't be prouder to call you a mate. Thank you for coming on the show, and um, you're always welcome. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you very much. Thank you. (laughs) 